How big would you rank tomorrow night's game in, in terms of your Scotland career? Yeah, look, it's uh, it's right up there. We know what's at stake. We know there's, you know, when you get close to an end of a, a campaign, there's no there's no room for error. Um, and we know we're at that stage now and so are all the other countries. So, look, we've put ourselves in a really good spot in terms of, you know, going into the last two games, being in control of our own destiny is all you can ask. And, um, yeah, look, tomorrow night's massive. And if we get the three points, we know what happens, but we know how hard it's going to be. We know how hard they made it at Hamden and we know we're in for a tough night. So we need to be at our best. Um, we've trained really well this week, been, you know, been really good. Um, so it's important we take that into the game and uh, and I'm sure if we do that, then we've got enough to get the three points. Would you say there's perhaps now more pressure on Scotland to qualify after qualifying for the Euros in the summer? Yeah, I wouldn't say there's more there's more pressure. I would just say that the boys got a feeling for getting to major tournaments and, you know, we really enjoyed it and we want to get back there. And I'm sure the fans are the same. I'm sure everyone connected to Scotland's the same. So, you know, that's... But you, when you play with your country, there's, there's always pressure on you. You know, you're representing your country, you're representing everyone that's back home and um, that brings its own pressure. So, um, I think we've been really good at dealing with the pressure. Um, I think we've been... You know, it's usually brought out the best in us and I hope that, that, that happens again on Friday night. Next question. Andy, is, is this a, a squad that's, that's comfortable with that pressure? Now, you've, you've had a few pressure games in the lead up to this and, and they seem to have risen to meet that every time. Yeah, look, we've had big games. Um, we've had big challenges. We've had setbacks in games that we've, we've came back from relatively well from. But... It's important we don't take that for granted. You know, it's important that every game is different. Every game is brings its different challenges, different, you know, pressures and everything. So, look, Friday, tomorrow night brings its, brings its own. Um, and I, I believe the players are, are well equipped to deal with it, but it's important that we show that. You know, three points are the most important thing tomorrow night. And if we do that, then we know that's a secured second place. And and that was, you know, that's that's been our aim since, since Denmark have clinched first place. And, um, yeah, so... We know what's at stake. Um, everyone at home knows what's at stake, and it's important that we we put in a performance that's that's good enough to get the three points. and And if we do that, then um, you know that's been job done, and, and everyone can look forward to to massive games in March. Grant Hanley and Lyndon Dykes have been you know real big players over over a, a good period now for Scotland. Will tomorrow night without them be a test of the, the strength and depth that this squad has? Yeah, look, obviously a big blow with Granty um, getting injured. Um, never nice to see somebody missing it through injury. Um, you know, he's he's one of the leaders in the squad. He's, um, you know, he's an excellent centre-back. And so, yeah, of course, look, when any when any of these players don't show up, it's, it's always difficult, it's always hard. But um, we also have quality um, in the ranks to, to step in, you know. Granty pulled out and uh, and John Souter came in, who's been um, you know excellent in training. We've already got Jack Henry, Scott McKenna, Liam Cooper, um, KT obviously plays there, McTominay. So look, these um, you know these players we we I think our squad's a lot better in um, in each position now. We've got we've got depth. Dykes, he's always been you know he's obviously been the one that's been scoring the goals the last couple of games, and he's he's just picked up too many bookings. And, and Ryan Christie too, um, you know Ryan scored. A, you know, some unbelievable goals for us and really important goals. So, look, there'll be a miss, but it also um, gives other people a chance. And, uh, um, you know, like I said, this squad's full of quality and when one person's missing, then it gives another person to, a chance to step up. Andy, every player that, that we've spoken to says there's something special about this group. What is it about this squad that just clicks? Yeah, look, it's... Um, you know we've got we've got a great bunch of lads. Um, we all get on. Look, it's all it's so important that you know you respect that there's going to be all different characters in the squad, and it's important to find a way to to make everyone gel. And I think we've managed to do that. Um, I think I think everyone loves coming away with Scotland. I think everyone looks forward to the international breaks and meeting up with the boys again. And um, you know that's really important because. You know, if we're if we're happy off the pitch and we're happy, you know, being stuck in hotels and doing lots of travelling and being together in it, then you know it, it, it can produce better performances on it. And I think you're seeing that just now. You know, the lads, we all got on really well, which is important. Um, and I think you see that with the relationships on the pitch as well. You know, everyone's fighting for each other. Everyone's 
backing each other up and um, yeah, I'd put that down to to why the results have been a lot better than, you know, I think you can see in the camp that, you know, everyone's happy to come away. And obviously you've talked, you've touched on the pressure of tomorrow night and you all know what's at stake clearly. Um, a big night though for players like yourself, Craig Gordon, experienced heads as well to really keep the boys calm, I would imagine. Yeah, look, luckily, um, you know, since the gaffers came in, he's he, he's been really, you know, consistency's been key in terms of his squad. You know, there's not been too many changes. So, you know, it means that a lot of boys have got a lot more caps. And, um, you know, when you look at it, you know, me and Craig are obviously the two highest. And then, you know, you've got McGinn and McGregor and, and even like Tierney and people like that that have been around the squad for a long time that... We'll need to use all the experience we've got. You know, we'll need to use, um, you know, all the past experiences and and everything like that. Um, tomorrow night, it's important, like you said, to stay calm, to to stay composed, and and play your game because we've got a game plan. We've, you know, we know what we're good at. Um, and it's important we do that tomorrow night because that's the best possible way we're we're going to win this game. Andy, you're just talking about caps. Here. Obviously, you're one of the most experienced players in the squad. I just wonder, do you ever look at players with loads of caps? Obviously, Kenny Dalglish with the record. Do you ever look at that and say, one day, I want that to be me. I want to be the record caps holder, along with all the other achievements and, and tournaments, hopefully, along the way. <laughs> Maybe joked once or twice with, it, with Kenny, but other than that, no. Um, you know, I've never been one to look too far forward and I've never been one to look, um, you know, in my past. I'm... Look, I, I work in the here and now. Um, I'm just looking forward to tomorrow night and, you know, getting another cap on the board. But, you know, you can't look. I think I'm on, what, 53, 54 now. And I think Kenny's well over 100. So I, I'm definitely not looking 50 caps time. You know, I'm looking at now and then, you know, looking forward to hopefully playoffs in March and, and hopefully represent my country at World Cup. That's same just now. Um, and look, I love represent my country. You know, if nothing stops me, then I'll show up to every single camp, and um, you know, whatever cap number I get, then great. But you know, to be honest with you, when I was a young boy, one would have been enough, and I'm lucky to be over fifty now. And um, I just want to keep going. I want to keep showing up. Keep you know, I love being captain of these boys and playing for my country. And you know, as long as injury prevents it, then um, I'll always be here. Going back to tomorrow night, you said uh, the injuries and suspensions give other players a chance to step up. Jacob Brown has come into the squad for the first time. How's he been? Uh, what kind of lad is he? You know, how, how have you helped him as captain settle in as well? Settled in really well. Um, you know, um, settled in off the pitch really well, which, you know, when I look at it, I think it's the most important. I think if, if, if players are settled off the pitch, you're most likely to get the best of them on the pitch. Um, he's trained really well this week. And um, yeah, the boys have took to him and he's took to the boys. You know, you can see him having laughs and jokes already, which is which is important. Um, you know, I had, you know, quite a few conversations with him. Seems a really good lad. And, and you know, it's important that he settles into the squad because, like I've touched on, the squad is already, um, you know, close and, and we've been through a lot of things together. And when you boys come in, it's important they feel part of it straight away. And, you know, you'll need to ask Jacob, obviously, that. But I believe he'll feel part of it already. And, you know, he'll feel comfortable in his surroundings. And um, that's the most important. And hopefully he gets minutes on the pitch. And, and if he does, then he'll, he'll be able to show that. Because, um, you know, he's a, he's a good player. I mean, he showed it in training. And um, like I said, if he's, if he's comfortable with his surroundings off the pitch, then I think we'll get the best of him um, on the pitch. Andy, it's a year since Belgrade. Can you say in what ways that might have transformed the mentality within the group and even among the supporters now that you know now that that final barrier has been breached well that was actually that you know you've probably answered it yourself David you know it was a barrier and um you know a lot of people in our country probably didn't believe that you know the country would ever get over it at, at, at one point you know the longer it goes the more people start believing that it's never going to happen again but you know, credit to the manager and the coaches. Um, they 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 changed that mentality with, you know, the help of the, obviously me and maybe the more experienced lads of just trying to, you know, change that mentality and not thinking about the last twenty three years, but thinking about the here and now. And we managed to do that, and we ticked a huge box by beating Serbia and being able to get to the Euros. And the feeling I think the whole country had when we were at a major tournament was incredible. And 
the boys are hungry for more and so, uh, so I'd imagine are the country because I think the country really came together and united then and, you know, we don't want to be sitting at home when the World Cup's going on or any more Euros are going on. We want to be there and but we know also how hard it is to get there. We know how much it takes um, and that's why we know how important tomorrow night is to to secure the playoffs and then March will bring its own challenges. But, Look, we need to we need to secure that first, and then everyone can build up to March. But we definitely want more of it. We definitely want to represent our country in more major tournaments, and you know that starts tomorrow night. One final. Well, question, have please. one point, Andy. Realistically, does that give you even more confidence going into this game? Yeah, she'll be wary, but more confidence. Um, no, because you know, probably unlike a lot of people back home and things, we've we've watched clips from them. You know, we've. We've watched them take the lead against Israel. We know how hard their games are. We've watched our game back when, you know, we beat them 1-0 at Hamden and they had a couple of chances that night. You know, we had a couple of really big chances that maybe it could have been a wee bit more comfortable, but, you know, they made it difficult for us that night. So, you know, I think we know how difficult, you know, international games are now. You know, Faroe Islands as well, last camp, you know, scoring in the 86th, 87th minute. It's all about three points tomorrow night and we know how hard it's going to be, but I do believe that if we're at our best and if we play to the potential that we've got, then we're good enough to get three points, but we need to go out and do that on the pitch. And if we do that, then, you know, hopefully we secure the second place because that's been the aim all along and, um, you know, it's certainly the aim for tomorrow night. Thank you, folks. Manager, just be one minute. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. Thanks, Andy.